Okay, thank you for joining this morning at our Startup Loft here at the Summit. Hope you guys all enjoy the keynote. I'm very excited to introduce our first speakers. They are from Vidora, um, doing a talk on doing strategic artificial intelligence on top of AWS. Um, so please welcome Abik and Philip from Vidora. Round of applause, please. Thank you, and uh, thank you to all of you for being here. It's, it's great to be here, and thank you to uh, AWS for hosting such a great event. Uh, we are Vidora, and uh, audio up. Audio up. Okay, so we are Vidora, uh, and we are a strategic AI uh, company, and we'll get into more detail about that in a sec, but uh, first, a little background on us. Uh, this is Abik. I'm Phil. Uh, and we are both founders at Vidora. Uh, Abik is our CTO, and uh, I'm head of product. And our founding team has a pretty strong background in uh, AI and machine learning uh, from some top tier institutions. Uh, and we have a handful of uh, large global customers that we work with to deploy this strategic AI. Uh, you can see a few of them here, uh, News Corp being one of them. They are spread across the globe, uh, and we're working with a large uh, amount of their properties uh, in order to, uh, to, to help them accomplish their goals. Uh, we are actually right down the street. We're in Soma here, right near the Whole Foods, near 4th and Harrison. You probably walked by on the way here today. So uh, when you're walking by, give us a holla. And, uh, Anyway, um, so uh, today what we're going to talk about, first, what is strategic AI? We're going to give a little background on, on that and, and Vidora. Uh, we're going to talk about the product and how customers integrate uh, with our platform. And then we're going to talk about the technology and how we leverage AWS uh, in order to make this all a possibility. So what is strategic AI? Uh, well, it's Vidora's vision that in the future, every business is gonna have an AI engine that's sitting at the, the core or at the boardroom table, so to speak, uh, with senior level execs uh, defining strategy uh, and optimizing towards the most important goals that the business has. Uh, and we call this strategic AI. And to put this into a little more context, uh, you can think of every business as having its own optimization landscape, so to speak. Uh, you know, every business is complicated. You have a lot of data, you have a lot of variables, and it can be very difficult to, to track that uh, with, with basic analytics. Uh, but you're always optimizing towards some kind of goal. And Vidora's purpose is to help these businesses optimize towards that overarching goal. So in this example, we have um, you know, an example strategic goal of minimizing churn. A lot of our customers are looking to, uh, to do that, actually. Um, but how do you get there? You know, there's a lot of different things that you can do. And this is the purpose of the AI, is to take all these variables into account, look at this very complicated landscape, identify that pinpoint, that peak point uh, that it needs to strive towards, and then it'll define what that optimal path is in order to get there. You know, there might be dips and valleys and distractions, but as long as, uh, as, long as you're using the AI, it knows where to go. Uh, and this landscape may change, so you might perform an action and then the landscape shifts. And the AI can take that into account. It can adapt very quickly and much more quickly than uh, a human can just by looking at uh, traditional analytics. So moving on, uh, now we're gonna talk a little bit about how our customers integrate with us and what strategic AI can do for them. Uh, before we jump into an example, it's better to just paint paint the picture and boil it down to these three steps. Every customer first needs to set a strategic goal with us. Uh, the AI needs to know what it's optimizing for. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, 
customers might have that ultimate goal of trying to minimize their churn. Once we've set that strategic goal, uh, the next step is to identify what we call the strategic touch points. And strategic touch points, you can, you can think of those as being all of the different ways that your business can engage with a particular user or end user. Uh, these could be unique email campaigns or unique push notifications. It could be modules and widgets on your site, page layouts, page flows. Uh, all of these are ways that you can engage your user. But there are a lot of them, right? So how do you optimize uh, for that strategic goal? And the AI is going to identify those key strategic touch points. It's going to identify the most important ones that you need to focus on. It'll simplify your strategy and allow you to ultimately accomplish that goal. Uh, the next step is implementing the intelligence APIs. Once, once you have identified those strategic touch points, the intelligence APIs are going to integrate with, uh, with the with the the and our customers' uh, experience, and each strategic touch point is going to have this this API that's driving it and pushing towards that goal. So, uh, for an email campaign, let's say it's going to uh, be taking every user into account. It's going to be it's going to have a profile built for that user. It's going to know what it needs to do to engage that user most effectively. Uh, and then there's going to be a feedback loop where uh, you know, the, the data is going to flow back into the system, and the AI is going to, going to continue learning and optimizing. So enough hand-waving. I'm going to hand it over to Abik. He's going to actually, actually walk you through how one of our customers has actually uh, worked through these three steps with us. Uh, and talk a bit about the results. Thank you, Phil. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, so as Phil mentioned, uh, we are working with a number of uh, Fortune 500 companies, very large companies. Um, and I'm going to walk you through an example of how one of our partners actually leveraged our technology to uh, hit one of the strategic goals. In this case, it will be a video, large video subscription platform. So the strategic goal uh, that this customer set was to reduce churn or increase their user retention. So after we ingested uh, their user data, uh, the first thing that the strategic AI engine did uh, was to map out every user and score them based on their likelihood of churning, their probability of churning. And as you can see, uh, a lot of users are qu were quite likely to churn, and hence it was very reasonable of them to actually try to reduce that number. And that was the strategic goal that was set for the AI engine. So the next step, as uh, Phil mentioned, was to figure out what was the right strategic uh, it, touch point for to actually go about reducing churn. So uh, what the AI engine figured out was, in this case, a weekly promotional push notification campaign would be the one that had the maximum bang for the buck in terms of reducing user churn. And in particular, it figured out uh, automatically that the best algorithm to use was uh, to push premium series, that is episodic content, out to users in, in an attempt to reduce churn. And while it was doing that, it could also make predictions about what was the expected gains that we could expect in terms of increasing user retention. So now that we've figured out the strategic, now that we have a strategic goal, we have the strategic touch point, the next is integrating into our intelligence APIs. So in this case, the customer integrated their push notification system into one of our strategic intelligence APIs uh, that was going to focus on increasing user retention by doing push notifications of premium series. So that's the customer finished this integration. Once that was done, the next thing we did was to run uh, an A-B test to figure out how, uh, how, how well we were doing in terms of increasing user retention. So the control group in this case was uh, going to get a push notifications that would try to maximize click-through rates. And that's what, what the customer was using uh, in the past. And uh, the new method would actually uh, use this new algorithm to actually increase user retention. So let's see how we did. 
So these are the results. And the first thing that pops out at you that is the click-through rate actually decreased. The click-through rate of the target group was lower than the control group, while the number of days active that the user per month increased substantially for the target group over the control group. And because days active is the biggest correlate to churning, the the amount of users churning decreased substantially too for the target group. So this seems almost counterintuitive at first blush. Most media companies are actually trying to increase their click-through rate. But sometimes it's not a good idea. Sometimes it's not a good idea to increase click-through rate if your goal is something else. If your goal is user retention, it can be a bad idea. So what is going on in the weeds? What is going, why did this happen? Well, the algorithm figured out that Premium series get users to organically come back to the site to watch follow-on episodes. And this is why you kind of see large video subscription providers develop new and original content that is most, more episodic based. And it was able to figure that out and it was right and it, users came back organically and that's why you had days active increasing and that's why you had users re being retained at a much higher rate. Uh, so in the next couple of slides, I'll actually uh, go over a little bit about how we've deployed our technology on AWS and our architecture at a high level. And of course, uh, we'll be at the startup bar, so if you have m you know, more in-depth questions, we'd be happy to answer them. So uh, these were sort of the architecture goals that we set uh, for our system. The first is obviously having a high degree of reliability and scalability, uh, which is necessary to service large clients. The second is to have those real-time learning loops so that as your optimization landscape changes, as users do different things, as your business needs change, we can adapt, adapt fast. And the third is obviously an ability to easily deploy new customers, ingest new kinds of data, adjust to business goals as they go on and do so at a rapid pace. Before I dive into the architecture, I'll give a quick uh, summary of how we've leveraged AWS over the years. So uh, when we started, uh, we were heavy users of S3 and EC2. They were really fast to get started on, easy scalability, and um, you know, we were able to deploy a number of large clients uh, based off that. As uh, more recently, we've been using a bigger suite of services. The one I'd like to call out here the most is uh, Spark EMR, which has been uh, a great help to us in terms of, and that's where we run our machine learning modeling, and that's where we run all our MapReduce jobs. Um, and it came out at right the, the, exactly the right time for us. So this is an overview of our architecture as deployed on AWS. It all starts with the uh, customer sending us data about their end users. And that comes in via, via many different ways, through our APIs, through log files, sometimes through Redshift, sometimes through Kinesis, all different kinds of ways. All of them get finally stored in our S3 buckets. And that's where our AI engine kind of takes over. So it two, does two things. First is the modeling uh, of the machine, building the machine learning models, which is done in Spark on Elastic MapReduce clusters. and uh, and that's where we try to learn that optimization landscape, try to figure out what is the best thing we can do to optimize for a business's strategic goal, whether that's increasing user retention, increasing revenue, whatever it is. Once we've built those models, they get stored in Cassandra, and then that's taken over by these EC2 spot fleet profile generators, which compute user profiles based on those machine learning models that figure out well, how, what is the best way we can engage this user to hit that business goal. And that's a large fleet of workers that we run to actually uh, compute every user profile. These are like millions and millions, hundreds of millions of user profiles. Those get stored in Cassandra. And uh, then that Cassandra instance, this is all running in US East, uh, get re gets replicated to each um, EC2 region or AWS region that Vidora is deployed in across the world, which then means where our customer's end user comes in, they can get routed to the correct region via Route 53's global load balancer to our intelligence API layer. The intelligence API layer pulls out the user profile from Cassandra, from its local Cassandra instance, and then applies whatever transformations it needs to actually serve the need uh, of the customer and uh, in the service of uh, hitting that strategic goal. 
With that, I come to the conclusion of our talk. Uh, thank you all for attending. Um, happy to field any questions. Those are our emails, philip and abek at vedora.com. Please do visit our blog. Um, lots more case studies and, uh, and collateral there as well as I would be remiss not to uh, mention our job openings. Uh, hiring across the board, but um, for this audience, perhaps the uh, most relevant would be uh, a solutions architect and machine learning uh, engineers. And thank you, and thank you to AWS for having us. And again, we will be here for the next two hours at the startup bar, so please come and ask questions. We'd love to chat. Thank you. <laughs>